Phoebe, P-H-O-E-B-E, -E, Goodman, G-O-O-D-M-A-N. Yeah, I was a science geek. I was born a science geek. Um, I remember doing a project in like primary school and you had to make a battery circuit and when you connected the circuit a light bulb was meant to go on. You meant to make it exciting and crazy because for primary school we want it to be fun. And I've hid my battery in a little guy and so when he clapped his hands the light went on above his head. I got a special prize for that. That was the first time I thought, hey I can do this, this is easy science. It's kind of positive reinforcement. When I was at secondary school, I found my best grades were in science. So I'd do more of it and I'd do better at it and it got harder and more interesting. So it kind of went that way. Funnily enough, I uh, quite enjoyed um, classics for a little while. I had this mad idea of being Indiana Jones or doing anthropology and that sort of thing, because that's also kind of how things work, how people work. But ultimately, I just love my uh, my physics and my maths and that's what I decided to do when I went to university. I'm developing a technology to remove fertiliser from water in the ground. It's um, basically I get a load of soil and I add a load of carbon and it creates an environment where the bacteria in the soil can gobble up all the fertiliser naturally, uh, releasing it as harmless gas and so uh, it's basically a kind of barrier idea you intercept the pollution before it hits anything important like a river or a lake or I guess a kid's paddling pool, whatever you want. The best, um, I love the planning stage, I love working out how I'm going to do things because I started quite an open remit and kind of had to go through and say well what do I do with this, how can I solve this and I absolutely loved kind of getting grips with the science involved and trying to work out how to fix it I'm really a problem solver and I just loved kind of uh, getting this problem in a kind of uh, formal structure and working out how to solve it. Um, I quite like doing the data analysis too because it's such a buzz when you find what you think is going to happen happened and you've got it there on the page and no one can tell you you're wrong. That's brilliant. What I don't like is the hours and hours and hours of repetitive tasks I have to do. I have to sift literally tons of soil, I have to acid wash literally tons of sand, I have to uh, sample frequently and do analysis frequently and you know the first few times it's kind of fun but after you've done 500 it starts to get a little dull so that'd be it. Well in 12 months I've got a long-term experiment running with tanks and I would like that to finish please and I'd like to have a lot of good data off it. I've got some short-term experiments with columns uh, each addressing particular problems about four separate different ones and I hope to have solved those particular problems and then because I'm in my third year the big job which is writing the thesis and it'd be lovely this time in 12 months if it's actually written and submitted. I'd like to say it was a sure thing <laughs> but uh, experience and knowing other PhDs suggests that maybe that's a little optimistic. Um, well, the ultimate goal is to submit the thesis, and the second ultimate goal is to get a job. Uh, PhDs have a tradition of kind of moving into academia or postdoc. Um, I don't think the academic career is really for me. I really want to go into consultancy because three years to spend on one subject is a long time, and that's very usual for an academic to run for years and years on a single problem. And I think I like the idea of having a bit more of a kind of short scale idea because I like to do different things and I get a bit bored if I'm doing the same thing every day. Uh, people tend to think that they're not going to understand if you try and tell them and I always think that's a shame. Uh, I remember that I did a talk for some sixth formers a few weeks ago at um, my mum's school and she was meant to uh, sit and watch but I told her not to bother because I knew she'd be on the back row going you know, what's she talking about? What's she talking about? Uh, but what I really uh, think is that most of the time, science, when you really boil it down, it's not so hard. It's it, like I keep saying, problem solving. If you understand the question, you can understand the answer.
but uh, people think get blinded by equations and kind of the little detail like which particular insect does this and it makes it inaccessible I think it's a shame A stereotypical scientist. I guess it's the uh, idea from Frankenstein, the guy in the white coat hopping around saying it's alive. It's alive. <laughs> um, so yeah, the egghead with the glasses and everything. Um, as a scientist, I'd say that isn't the stereotypical scientist. The stereotypical scientist tends to be very, uh, very um, careful, very hardworking. They tend to be male, I will admit. Uh, average height, average builds, they're nothing extraordinary, there's nothing that normally marks them out. Um, I'd say I probably do look a bit different from the typical scientists simply because I think possibly my age and also because I'm just a girl I guess. But it depends what sector, if we're talking psychology they're mostly girls. Um, when I'm not a scientist, I do have a husband. I do have an extremely noisy and precocious Siamese cat. Um, in terms of recreational stuff, I do jiu-jitsu, uh, tai chi. Um, I've taken up belly dancing with an academic in my department, and so far it's been good fun. Um, and then the standard things, I like movies, drinking wine, going out, that sort of thing. Oh, I don't know. I think I would have... Oh, that's really hard. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm absolutely drawing a blank. never occurred to me to do something else. Uh, in my wildest fantasies, I'm Indiana Jones or sailing the world in a yacht. But uh, I don't think that's going to come true on either count. So uh, I'd probably go into something to do with human resources and stuff because I really like people more than kind of dealing with spreadsheets and order forms and supply chain demands and all that sort of thing. Oh, a chocolatier. There you go, I'll be a patisserie or a chocolatier. That'd be cool.